is the moment you've all been waiting for. Blizzcon, 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 Blizzcon. We want to give a big BlizzCon welcome. What is up, BlizzCon? Ladies and gentlemen, BlizzCon love is in the air. Whoa, thing just got real. I am so stoked to be here. Stick with us and you'll never miss a moment. It's time for our favorite part of BlizzCon. Who's gonna take it all? That is the story. Ladies and gentlemen out there, are you ready for the grand finals? The winner is Have No Fear! Thank you, BlizzCon. Make some noise! We have a new world champion! Be good to one another, have fun, welcome home. I am from Chile. I'm from Toronto. We're from Australia. I'm from Panama. We're from France. channel i'm michelle morrow alongside malik forte and we're coming to you live from the anaheim convention center for the epic event of the year blizzcon 2019 malik what is up i'm so happy to have you here yeah you excited or what am i excited yeah i don't know michelle uh does winston love peanut butter on his bananas <laughs> do i love reaper yes is savannah's evil no <laughs> Of course I'm ready. He caught, he caught me. We're going to find out more about that soon. <laughs> Hopefully, the fate of Sylvanas and everything else. We are less than 20 minutes away from opening a ceremony. And this was the scene just a few moments ago as Blizzard fans from all over the world converged on the Anaheim Convention Center. Yeah, There's yeah, yeah. I saw, I, saw, up everywhere. I saw a people eater there. Uh, yeah. it, was, it was real <laughs> scary right there. But guys, uh, if you want to make sure you don't miss a moment of this year's BlizzCon, you've come to the right place. We'll be here with you on the All Access channel for the next two days, bringing you all the big announcements, the developer panels, the talent and costume contest, and the closing night festivities as well. And of course, as always, we're going to be sitting down with some of your favorite Blizzard executives and developers to dig even deeper into what's on the horizon for every franchise in the Blizzard universe. This yeah. is a big BlizzCon. It's a big one, big one. All right, so our All Access Roman reporters are also back this yeah. year, and they'll be checking in throughout the next two days to give you a feel for what it's like out there on the convention center floor, starting right now with Anna Prosser, who's standing by with BlizzCon executive producer, Sarah Lynn Smith. Thanks so much, guys. I'm so excited for the opportunity to chat with Sarah Lynn Smith, the executive producer of BlizzCon. Sarah Lynn, this is your second time, second, second year in this role. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about what you were most excited about last year, and then as we go into this year, what you're most excited about here. Oh, wow. Yeah, in 2018, I guess a big lesson was how much people love Lindsay Sterling. She was one of our closing performers, and she was actually our highest rated performer ever from the attendees. Wow. So yeah, I think it was a good, um, indication for us that we want to have talent that are relevant for the community that are in the gaming scenes so that was awesome and then uh, this year we have so much new stuff and I'm really excited about the Blizzard Arcade which is downstairs in Hall E hope everyone will check it out it has uh, new stuff and it has uh, some retro stuff we're really excited about also down there is our cinema which we're hoping for families or anyone that doesn't want to see mature content uh, that they'll go down to the cinema in Hall E uh, but there's other things I can't quite talk about yet that we hope everyone will be uh, super excited for. Oh, I'm sure. There's always things that you can't tell us. Are there any hints or things that you want us to be ready for for the opening ceremony? I know you can't give us any spoilers, but how should we prepare ourselves? Oh, my. Um, well, there will be big announcements. <laughs> There'll be amazing <laughs> cinematics, as always. We're going to be going from Hall D then to Hall C and Hall B. So we'll have, you know, three stages involved with the overall production. And besides that, I probably shouldn't share anything. <laughs> Well, speaking of going from hall to hall, if people at home are watching with the virtual ticket, oh, yeah. some people may not have grabbed theirs yet. What will they be getting and what would they be missing if they don't have a virtual ticket? Oh, okay, good question. So, well, first of all, the virtual ticket comes with all these in-game goodies. Uh, so this year we have like two uh, Murloc pets in World of Warcraft and this awesome uh, uh, onesie, like this Yeti onesie for WoW. We've got two legendary heroes uh, for, um, for Overwatch. And so there's lots of in-game goodies to check out, but then also live at the show, we really want the virtual ticket to be the best way to experience BlizzCon if you can't actually be here in Anaheim. Yeah, so we have uh, you know t additional 25 hours of content that people can watch just from the comfort of their home, on their couch. Uh, so yeah, I hope that's a, a great experience. 
Now, one thing I want to ask you, because we always talk about what Blizzard is bringing to BlizzCon, but you mentioned the community and making sure that things are relevant to them. What are you most excited that the community is going to bring here to BlizzCon to you? Oh, that's by far my favorite part, uh, the cosplay. I really just love the cosplay. I love Community Night. I love the March of the Murlocs. We did that for the first time last year. We really weren't gonna, we weren't sure how it was going to go, so we had six employees in, in onesies if we needed them, and then like hundreds of people showed up, so that was awesome. We're doing that again. We've even got the Pepe cosplay gathering, so all of that is adorable. I mean, I'm close to making the show all year, so I kind of know about the big things that Blizzard's doing, but I just love all weekend we'll be taking photos of what the communities bring to the show. I love it. I can't wait to see it. And I can't wait to see the opening ceremony. So we're going to head that way right now. But thank you so much, thank Sarah you. Lynn. Thank you. All right, back to you guys. Thank you, Anna and Sarah <laughs> Lynn. Uh, she's keeping it tight lipped, yeah, man. I'm so hyped right now. I know. <laughs> I know. Uh, well, yeah. let's take a look. We've got a lot of great guests coming on the show today. Here's everybody so. lined up for the weekend. This is Friday. Uh, here on the pre show, we're going to have Sam Braithwaite. He is the esports global director. So we're going to find out about everything going down with all the championship games happening. Yeah, so yeah. hopefully he can break down some StarCraft, some Hearthstone, right. Right. some Warcraft. I want to talk Arena. World Cup with him. That's yeah. going to be fun. That's going to be fun to see what he thinks about Overwatch World Cup. Definitely. Definitely. And we've got a Jalen Brack coming to the desk as well, right after opening ceremony, the president of Blizzard Entertainment. Yeah, yeah. Uh, later on tonight, we're going to have Jeff Kaplan joining us uh, to end the show. I can't wait for that. Uh, I can't wait for the Jeff, 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 Jeff. Jeff, 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 the, Jeff. The, the <laughs> Jeff. Uh, he's going to be here with us. And uh, tomorrow, uh, we're going to have a Tons of illustrious guests as yeah. well. Uh, K.O. Milker is going to be joining us to talk some Heroes of the Storm. K.O. Milker, me and him have a little bit of a personal attachment. That was the first guy I've ever interviewed at Blizzard. No so uh, that's going to be fun. That's awesome. Uh, I'm excited for Ian Hazakostas. He's the World of Warcraft Games Director. And uh, we have a lot to talk about. Yeah. I am. Uh, I have a lot of Sylvanas questions for him. Oh, yeah? So oh, yeah. OK. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. I'm, I'm, I have a lot. put him in the hot seat. I in can't seat. wait for that. <laughs> well, uh, guys, uh, now that you know who's going to be stopping by, you can start tweeting us questions for all of your guests with the hashtag BlizzCon2019. And if you have questions for Michelle and I, you can tweet those as well. We will be looking. And at the end of the day, we're going to be sending you guys over to Community Night for the talent and costume contest. And um, every single year, these costumes keep getting bigger and yeah. better and more elaborate. The craftsmanship that goes into these things is amazing. So if you love cosplay, you definitely don't want to miss it. Look at that, bring it up. Look at uh, Vita. Uh, how many hours do they spend? How much time do they spend making these you costumes? You know, no joke, some people spend a year doing this, all year long. So um, oh, man, I'm the, excited to see what passion, people come up with. Somebody's dedication. come up with a Sigma and have no shoes on. You know it's going to happen. They better get a pedicure before they do that. <laughs> <laughs> walk around with no shoes on. And, uh, guys, the talent contest should also be pretty epic this year. Have no fear. They are back to defend their title after winning it all. And they'll be going up against another fan favorite, Bob Ram Yu, who will be trying to break through for their first community night win. This is his own little competition that we're having here amongst all the esports. This is like this own little thing. <laughs> it's happening true. Here. It's yeah. been going on for a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so as you guys can see, we've got a lot happening for you guys over the next two days. And if you want to see it all, you're going to need the BlizzCon virtual ticket, which is available right now on BlizzCon.com. Yep. Your purchase is going to unlock like 25 hours of live and on-demand Blizzard content, giving you guys full access to every stage, every panel, every inch of the Anaheim Convention Center. You're also going to receive some bonus in-game items that Sarah Lynn Smith kind of mentioned. Yeah. Um, everything in the Blizzard universe, including a pair of Mac, uh, Murloc faction leaders for WoW, one that looks like Sylvanas, which is great, yeah. Illidan and Trianda legendary skins for Overwatch, and much more. Did you say legendary skins? I did. I am on board. <laughs> well, uh, guys, right now, you're watching our free preview, and if you've joined us in the past, you know that usually it ends right after opening ceremony. Uh, but this year, there's so much going on and so much exciting stuff to talk about that for the first time ever, we're extending the free view window all the way until 4.30 p.m. So now you'll have a full six hours to check out the incredible wall-to-wall -wall BlizzCon coverage we're offering here on the All Access channel. Super cool. I don't think we've ever been live on Twitter. Yeah. yeah, I don't think we've ever even done that. This nope. is crazy. So guys, if you want to continue watching after that and all day tomorrow, you can pick up a virtual ticket on BlizzCon.com. And no matter how you guys choose to watch Experience BlizzCon, whether you're at home or whether you're here with us today, you're going to want to download the new and improved BlizzCon mobile app for iOS and Android. It's got yeah. a ton of features on it. You can cast your favorite screen with AirPlay and uh, Chrome Cast, how we've dubbed it in the past. Um, you can easily navigate the show floor with an interactive map. You can watch live streams and on-demand video content. And probably my favorite thing about the app is that you can create your own custom schedule so that right. you can never miss anything. That way, if you're on a panel and you want to see a different panel, you can yeah. put it all, line it up in the app. Got a 
Nice yeah. tight schedule. Yeah, and if you combine everything with a mobile app with your virtual ticket, you can really buff your BlizzCon experience <laughs> by unlocking a full access to all BlizzCon video content, live streams, merchandise, and much more. So get it now wherever you download your apps. That's true. All right, let's take a live look in at Mythic Hall, where Blizzard fans are anxiously awaiting the start of opening ceremony now less than 10 minutes away. What's up, Mythic What's Hall? What's up, Mythic Hall? Raise the roof. Let's hear it. Excited. That's awesome. Oh, yeah, look man. at everybody. That's so many people. I, I miss I being it. in that room. Yeah, right? I know. Right? I'm going right? to go out we're, over there. We're after. chained to the desk yeah, now. You're going to run over there. Well, we're guys, away. let's go ahead and check in with our other roaming reporter, Rachel Querco, a.k.a. Seltzer, who's standing by at the arena with a very special guest. Thank you guys so much. It's true. I have the specialist of guests because if you watch any esports, especially Blizzard esports, you got to know this guy. It's Alex Goldenboy Mendez, global icon, national treasure, blessing us with his presence. Alex, welcome back to BlizzCon. Hey, it's good to be here. I don't know if the people in here can hear me uh, because, you know, obviously being a global icon, I need everyone to be able to hear me. But it's okay, though. I'm, a, I'm very excited to be here. Obviously, my fourth BlizzCon. It's going to be awesome. I can't wait. Well, we can do a quick test if they can hear you. We're here in the arena. We've got so many fans excited to watch the opening ceremonies. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready for BlizzCon? Yeah. It worked. It worked. I stole your are you ready. Do you want to do, do it? Oh, yeah. Sure, sure, sure. Wait. Ladies and gentlemen, I said, are you ready? That's what we're paying the big bucks for. Now, Alex, you're here for the Overwatch World Cup. This brings teams from the Overwatch community from all around the world here to Anaheim, California to compete. Tell me about why this event is so special to you. Uh, well, you know, the uh, Overwatch World Cup has been going on for quite a while now, and it's always been a blast to be a part of. Uh, it's just great to be home with the community. And while we were at the Overwatch League Finals and it was awesome, this is a great opportunity for fans to be able to show their country pride, uh, whether you're cheering for Team USA, who might lose to South Korea again. Who no! No, okay, sorry, 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 sorry. Uh, you know, but there's obviously like just a lot of fun to, to be had here. Uh, and I'm also pumped too because we're gonna have the desk back together again. So it's myself, Brand Sideshow, Reinforce. We're gonna have a lot of shenanigans, props, it's going to be wild. So you're promising me that this is going to be as exciting a desk as we had last year? Uh, yeah, well, you know, it's a, it's a lot to live up to, but we're going to try our best. We're going to have a good time. That's the most important thing. We're here at BlizzCon. Everyone here is amazing. We're just going to have a good time, Rachel. That's what it's all about. Right, guys? Right, right, that's right. Yes. There you go. Pandering. Alex, you have been involved with the Overwatch community, the esports community at large, all year long. BlizzCon is an incredible gathering of all of these communities. So tell me what you've seen over the year and what you're most excited to see kick off here at BlizzCon. You know, I just want to know about the future. That's it. I want to know what we have coming up next. I have no idea. I've been People have been coming up to me saying like, oh yeah, you know, Golden Boy, you've been in the hot tub, you got the leaks, you got the juice. I don't have anything. No one tells this boomer anything, and it frustrates me. I want to know all the good stuff, and we're going to find that out in a little bit. It's going to be awesome. Absolutely. We are getting closer and closer to opening ceremonies. So, Alex, I'm going to send you back to the Overwatch World Cup duty. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to need you to keep your booties in the seats because it is time to send it back to Malik and Michelle to get us that much closer. <laughs> Rachel, thank you so much, and thank you, Golden Boy. All right, we are now joined here at the desk by Esports Global Director Sam Braithwaite for BlizzCon Esports. Preview. Hello, hello. I don't want to be left out. <laughs> What's going on? So let's jump right into it, because yeah. we got opening ceremony here. Let's talk uh, StarCraft. We have Cyril, yes. who's had some some back-to-back -back wins. What do you think we're going to be looking forward to? Yeah, so what's actually cool about StarCraft is StarCraft actually kicked off last week for the opening week in Seoul. It's the 16 best players in the world competing for $600,000. We have eight players coming from the GSL circuit in Korea. We have eight players coming from the WCS circuit in uh, the rest of the world, and they're going to be battling it out. Cyril is absolutely a storyline to watch. Yeah. He's a Finnish superstar, the first non-Korean to ever win a global finals, but there's seven people here that are gonna make sure that he doesn't do it again. The two that I'm looking out for is one, Rainer, who is a 17-year-old Italian kid who has beat oh, Cyril geez. twice this year in the WCS circuit. His name is Rainer? Like, Rainer. <laughs> that's so crazy. Uh, R-E-Y, though. R-E-Y, oh, okay, okay. R-E-Y, yeah. <laughs> And then also, uh, out of all the Koreans, I'm looking at Classic. Uh, we actually didn't think Classic, Classic was going to make it to this tournament. He had mandatory military service. We were able to get an extension from the government. Oh, wow. He's been competing in StarCraft forever. He's made it to the top eight. 
Imagine right before you retire to be able to take the title of world champion. That's cool. Yeah. That's cool. That's very cool. Yeah. A lot of stuff to look forward yeah. to in the StarCraft scene. Oh, Let's yeah. keep it moving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On to World of Warcraft. Last year, yes. we, for the first time, we had the Mythic Dungeon Invitational. It was a big hit, and we're bringing it back this year. So what can we expect from oh, the yeah. So for MDI, so now it's the Mythic Dungeon International. A oh, little it's bit of rebranding yeah. that we got there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so that's been an awesome competition. Really what we've been seeing is Method EU dominating pretty much the entire year. Right. Except at the spring finals, we saw their sister team, Method NA, take them down. And going into MDI, it's actually anybody's game. We don't know who's going to win, which I think uh, makes it a great competition. Right. We actually saw Method NA take down Method EU yesterday in some of the preliminary matches oh, and wow. knocked them down to the lower bracket. Wow, wow, that's super exciting. And on the other side, we have WoW Arena. Yep. Is there yes. anything uh, we should be looking out for in that yeah, so MDI weekend. is today, Friday, so if right. you want to catch that, it's today. Okay. The Arena World Championship is tomorrow. Right. That's going to be eight teams, four players each, PvP tournament. Uh, for the past few years, it's really been North America and Europe battling it out. Uh, but we have two dark horses coming in, a team from Latin America and a team from Australia. Yeah. And so we're really seeing if they can kind of shake up the meta a little bit. Very cool. Let's yeah, talk. I, there's a lot going on with Warcraft for yes. sure. But I'd love to jump into Hearthstone, the, the yeah. Grandmasters Global Finals. Um, you know, we've got... Uh, VK Lyon, she's the first woman to advance to this area. So yes. what what can we expect from her? Totally. So VK Lyon is the first female player to ever compete in a world championship for Hearthstone, which is super exciting. She's coming ah, from awesome. China. Yeah. Uh, and Hearthstone this year, we launched a brand new ecosystem called Hearthstone Grandmasters. It's mm -hmm. a league competition. So what we're looking at today is the top two players from the Americas region, top two from Europe, top two from Asia Pacific, and top two from China, all battling out for $500,000. We put a new patch in about a month ago, and so the game has a new meta, and it's uh, pretty crazy, and I think anybody could win. Well, I yeah. doubt anybody's playing Hunter, but if they are, I hope it's hilarious. One person has Hunter. <laughs> okay. Really? okay. One person, All right. Yes. Fingers crossed. All right. That's going right. to be exciting. All right. Well, last but not least, uh, let's go to yes. my backyard real quick. Yes. The Overwatch World Cup. I really want to talk this with you. Of course, Team South Korea, they've been dominant. They've won three years oh, in yeah. a row. Any chance of seeing somebody take down Team South Korea this year? You know, it, you don't want to say it, but I think everybody wants to see that, right? right. Everybody yeah. at least wants to see somebody put up a, a threat to them. Yeah. Three years in a row is crazy. Going for the four-peat, that would be insane. Uh, but we're really excited to see kind of how that shapes up. Preliminary matches started yesterday. Group stages are today. But if you want to watch it live, we're going to be in the arena all day Saturday. And it's going to be the top six teams. It's a lot of Canada fans here. How do you oh, feel yeah. like Canada's shaping up? Canada is uh, always looking as a contender. They're, what, top three the past two years. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, you got XQC on it. Everybody loves him. So Yeah, yeah. What about Team USA? I mean, this is a team that has the Overwatch League MVP and Sinatra on their squad. Yes. Do you think there's a good chance that they are the guys who pull off the upset against Team South Korea? I hope so. I think we're yeah. going to see a USA versus South Korea finals. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Oh, really? Oh, I have another that's question. That's what you think. That's, huh. what I, that's, what, that's my, opinion, my opinion. All right, all right. I have another question about World Cup. Uh, yeah. You got the things were a little different this year. There were a lot of teams that came from different regions this year. Yeah. There. Uh, kind of, how was that yesterday? Kind of seeing all these teams come from all these different. It regions was super play. cool. It was uh, something we really wanted to try different. Is how do we get more people participating and being more inclusive with the Overwatch World Cup? Just seeing all those different teams coming together, and one, the community surrounding the esports competition was awesome. But to see all the different people from different countries coming and battling it out, it was really cool to kind of see who played well against who. Uh, there's some teams that had never even played against each other before, and so it was really interesting to see how the different metas kind of came together. What's it been like for you? I mean, e's, you know, I've been doing the show for six years. Yeah. How has it been for you to watch esports grow to what it is today? Oh, it's been awesome. It feels like uh, just yesterday I was here in the fans uh, watching Warcraft 3 being competed. Right. And now we're here. We have, what, four games and five competitions yeah. across two days. I That's remember crazy. when it was just StarCraft Warcraft. Yeah, that right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then we yeah. have so much prize money up for grabs from all of our competitors. It's yeah. really cool to see people train and practice, master their craft for an entire year, and come and compete on the big stage. Yeah. Like, that's what BlizzCon's all about, you know what I mean? Right. What, what arena are you going to be sitting in? <laughs> uh, I have the, the luxury of being able to visit all of them, but tonight I'm going to be catching the, the, the StarCraft finals. Well, Sam, thank Starcraft you so finals. much for coming yeah, and joining yeah. us at the desk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We really appreciate you awesome. coming and sitting Thanks, down guys. and chatting with us. But guys, let's see how uh, you guys are gearing up for BlizzCon on social media right now. Um, yeah. And uh, actually, you know what? Before we do that, let's go ahead and toss things right over to Mythic. Oh, we're going to check in on Mythic Hall yeah. again. We'll Mythic Hall. Mythic Hall yeah, yeah, What's yeah. going on? I guess we're still, we are still here for us. But actually, right now, we are going to go to opening ceremony. But first, president of Blizzard Entertainment, Jay Allen Brock, has a message that he'd like to share.
How you feeling, BlizzCon? Before we start the opening ceremony, I want to say a few words. You know, uh, Blizzard had the opportunity to bring the world together in a tough Hearthstone esports moment about a month ago, and we did not. We moved too quickly in our decision making, and then, to make matters worse, we were too slow to talk with all of you. When I think about what I'm most unhappy about, there's really two things. The first one is we didn't live up to the high standards that we really set for ourselves. And the second is we failed in our purpose. And for that, I am sorry and I accept accountability. So what exactly? So what exactly is our purpose? BlizzCon is demonstrating it even as we speak. We aspire to bring the world together in epic entertainment. And I truly believe in the positive power of video games. When we get it right, we create a common ground where the community comes together to compete, connect, and play, irrespective of the things that divide us. As an example, BlizzCon has people from 59 countries all around the world here at the show today. That is amazing. And that is the positive power of video games to transcend divisions that surround us in so many of our places today. We will do better going forward. But our actions are going to matter more than any of these words. As you walk around this weekend, I hope it's clear how committed we are to everyone's right to express themselves in all kinds of ways, in all kinds of places. I've actually seen and heard Many of you expressing yourself this morning. <laughs> you use your vacation and your family time to be here in Anaheim with us, and we are so grateful that you're here this weekend. Our best moments are here in our shared passion for Blizzard games. So once again, BlizzCon has brought us together, and today you're going to see a lot of the hard work of the Blizzard team. I am personally, I am personally so proud of what we are building, and I hope you love it too. Thank you for joining us. So, are you ready to start the countdown? Let's do it. Guide myself to thy sacred light. 
Listen, I cried. My eternal light protects me. Thy divine wisdom guides me. Quiet. I thought my father's wrote of darkness. Shut up. They have our scent. Run! Free thy way open. Blood shows. This doesn't make any sense. Blood. Blood. Blood is the key. Bl blood is the key. Ah, what? I need two of you. No. Go. I'll hold them. Go. So. It says the, the blood of the willing goes. Ugh. You gotta be kidding me! Cheer up. Gold splits better three ways instead of four. <laughs> Must be hidden here somewhere. Read this. <laughs> <laughs> Of... Oh, no. No, no, no. What about the coin? What's it say? This is forbidden. This is a summoning. I cannot speak this Don't time. lie to me! We came here for treasure. What is this place? I, I, I don't know. <sighs> maybe, maybe, maybe it's a temple. Or, or two or more.
Listen, I can't. The eternal life protects me. The divine wisdom guides me. Through my path is water path. Guide my soul to thy sacred place. There is no light here. You came to the darkness for knowledge. <sighs> yes. And all the knowledge you seek is here. Surrender. Speak the words. Call her home. By three, they come. By three, thy way opens. By the blood of the willing, we call thee home. Please welcome game director of Diablo, Luis Barriga. Good morning, BlizzCon. It is so very good to be here. I want to thank all of you for coming and a big thank you to Blizzard Cinematics for starting things off the right way this weekend. I know you all want to hear about the game, so let's get to it. Diablo 4 is darkness, world, and legacy. Let's start with darkness. Diablo 4 is dark. You just saw the cinematic, so you know exactly what I'm talking about. Whether it's the art, the story, or the horror elements that we've embraced, the first thing you will notice about Diablo 4 is that we are going back to the franchise's darker roots. It'll mean blood and gore. It'll mean occult symbols and rituals. 
More importantly, it will mean victories are neither clean nor guaranteed. We hope you're as excited about that as we are. Then we have World, also super important for Diablo 4, because we've only seen glimpses into Sanctuary in previous Diablo games. But those gl glimpses have enthralled us and captured our imaginations. With Diablo 4, we want to put the World of Sanctuary front and center. We want every character, every monster, every faction to have a sense of place. Drowned undead that emerge from the coastlines. Brutal goat men that come from the hills above us. And as we go deeper and deeper into the depths below, a truly dark, gothic, and medieval version of hell. The world is also how you'll experience most of our game. It is there that you will find enemy camps and friendly towns alike. It is also where you'll find players to interact with, whether it's to trade with them, group with them, or should you choose to do so, murder each other in PvP zones. <laughs> Finally, legacy. Whether it's the sense of dread from Diablo 1, or the classic class lineup and loot chase that we still are inspired by from Diablo 2, or the best in class visceral and fluid combat to, from Diablo 3 that we still enjoy, we are approaching this series with complete reverence and we hope that it shows. If you are new to the series, we want you to feel like we did when we first played Diablo. If you're a longtime fan, we think this is the game you've been waiting for. Isometric action RPG developed for PC, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One. On that note, on that note, we want to offer you a first glance at Diablo 4, along with our first three classes. The Barbarian, the Sorceress, and the Druid. On behalf of everyone on the Diablo 4 team, it is our absolute pleasure now to share with you the world premiere of the Diablo 4 gameplay trailer. The dream continues to haunt me, old friend. It always starts with a journey to a distant land. There I find a city in flames. Streets choked with corpses. Unthinkable destruction. I witness senseless slaughter. Brother against brother. Pure hatred. And then, executions. Agony. Suffering surrounded me until my turn comes. They burn my eyes. Break my bones. I awaken in terror. There's no one left to stand against them.
think me mad, old friend. But I know these dreams. They tell of the future. Hell is coming, brother. Hell is coming. All right. How'd you guys like that first look? We have a super exciting next couple days ahead of us. We have panels where we're gonna go deeper into the features, the systems, the world, the art of Diablo 4, starting with an unveil panel right after opening ceremony on this stage. But that's not all. The team's been working super hard on the game, and therefore we've been able to bring a little bit of that, a little taste for that. That's right, we have a very early look, a demo playable, on the floor today, right now. We hope you have as much fun playing it as we did making it. And once again, on behalf of the game team, thank you all and see you in hell. Please welcome game director of World of Warcraft, Ian Hazakostis. Terran Zerg! <laughs> Heroes of the Storm! <laughs> Legends of the Tavern! <laughs> Heroes of Overwatch! <laughs> and soon, ready to battle the minions of hell in Diablo 4, the brave souls of Sanctuary! It feels really great to be able to say the words Diablo 4 out loud. <laughs> we use code names when we're working on the game, and we train ourselves not to reference the real name. And so when we're able to kind of come out and finally say Diablo 4, it feels a bit wicked. Diablo 4. We've actually had Diablo 4 in development for some time. You know, when we come before you, we want to ensure that when we reveal Diablo to you, that we can give you a good look at the dark vision of Sanctuary, along with a playable experience here at BlizzCon. You know, I've personally spent a lot of time of playing Diablo over the years, and a lot of love has gone into this game, and I really hope everyone enjoys it. So let's talk about what else is here for us at BlizzCon, our Baker's Dozen BlizzCon, lucky number 13. We see BlizzCon as the place where the Blizzard community can have a home away from home. It's our home, too, because many of us have grown up playing Blizzard games. We've forged lifelong friendships. We've made memories. And we've also had a lot of fun over the last 28 years. This year, for the very first time, we've set up something to honor that legacy and celebrate the beginning of what's made Blizzard great. Celebrate the games and the communities that we have. We're excited to debut the Blizzard Arcade in Hall E. The Blizzard Arcade has an old school arcade vibe. Gather there with friends, play some games, and experience some of the earliest things that Blizzard has ever made. For the very first time at BlizzCon, we have Rock and Roll Racing, Blackthorn, and The Lost Vikings. If you've never experienced these games before, or if you have and you want to relive the magic, then the arcade is a great place to hang out. Joey Ray's Bar, as well as the Slaughtered Calf Inn are there, so you're welcome to kick back, relax, and enjoy. 
But the arcade isn't just a celebration of where we've come from. It's also a showcase of some of our new announcements. Let's talk about StarCraft II. If you're a StarCraft fan, we have two exciting things for you in the arcade. For several years, we've been working with Google and the DeepMind Artificial Intelligence Project. The DeepMind group has taught agents how to play the game as part of their AI research. And I'm excited to say that for the very first time, players are going to be able to pit themselves against DeepMind AI agents right here on the show floor. We have a master, we have master level agents. We have a diamond level agent. And just a quick note that if you try this, you, you will not win. <laughs> Three of you will win. I, I won't win. For StarCraft II fans, we've also been really hard at work on bringing an iconic villain to life. I'm excited to announce that the leader of the Sons of Korhal and the ruler of the Terran Dominion, Arturus Mansk, is coming to the game later this month as the next co-op commander. <laughs> Manx is unlike any commander that you've ever played, and at BlizzCon, he's loaded up and ready for you in the arcade. Let's talk Heroes of the Storm. <laughs> for Heroes fans, the team has brought Deathwing the Destroyer into the Nexus. Deathwing is actually the most requested hero of all time, and we're excited for you to have an opportunity to play. Deathwing actually has two forms with two different sets of abilities, bringing the iconic World Breaker fantasy to life. And Deathwing is playable here for the very first time in the Blizzard Arcade. In addition, everyone with a BlizzCon or virtual ticket will automatically receive Deathwing when he enters the Nexus. Yes, yeah! so one more thing to talk about with, uh, with Heroes, and it's that in celebration of BlizzCon, all Heroes are free from now until November 10th. So if you've ever wanted to jump in and play, now's a great time. We have one other thing in the, one of a real-time strategy game in the Blizzard Arcade for you. It is called Warcraft 3 Reforged. <laughs> we recently started the beta, and we're ready to expand the pool of testers. So everyone here, everyone watching with a virtual ticket, you'll all have beta access to Warcraft 3 Reforged starting Tuesday. And we'll, announce, and we'll announce the release date for Warcraft 3 Reforged soon. <laughs> this month is an important one in Warcraft history because we are celebrating both the 25-year anniversary of Warcraft and the 15-year anniversary of World of Warcraft. Yeah. We kicked off that celebration two months ago with the launch of WoW Classic. And we've been excited to welcome back millions of players to Azeroth. It's been a really amazing experience to, ex to see the beginning of the game all over again. You know, many of you uh, I've heard cursing your limited bag space. <laughs> many of you are experiencing Baron's chat, maybe for the first time. And some of you have even gone back to feed your hunter pets. <laughs> it's part of that anniversary celebration. And in remembrance that for some of you, your favorite flavor is vanilla. We have vanilla ice cream for sale in the WoW concessions area. <laughs> you think that you want this. And I think maybe that you do. BlizzCon isn't just a celebration of our games, it's also a celebration of the players who play them. 
And here you can see some of the most skilled pro players compete in our games. I want to thank everyone out there for giving your energy and your support to your favorite teams and favorite players. About a month ago, we held the grand finals for the Overwatch League in Philadelphia. Congratulations to the San Francisco Shock and 2019 MVP Sinatra. Next season, the league is moving to a home and away format. And that means there's competition taking place in 20 cities all around the world. And this is the very first time that something like this has been done in esports. And so it is a great time to be a fan of the Overwatch League, and it's a great time to love Overwatch. At BlizzCon this weekend, the best of the best are going to battle it out in the Overwatch World Cup, featuring more than 30 country-based teams from all around the world. We'll also be celebrating champions and crowning champions for StarCraft II World Championship Series, the Hearthstone Grand Masters, the WoW Arena World Championships, the WoW Mythic Dungeon International Tournaments. BlizzCon has been home to some great moments in esports history, and we're excited to watch the action unfold over the next two days. This weekend just an, isn't just about celebrating our pro players. It's also celebrating with you, the Blizzard community. One of the highlights of the show is our community night contests. And for me, that's actually my personal favorite of the show. I am pleased to announce that Darren DePaul, voice of Reinhardt, among other famous Blizzard characters, has returned to host. This is one of the places where you really see the vibrant and creative gaming community that is Blizzard and is BlizzCon come to life. Um, and we're really excited about the talent that everyone demonstrates. All right. In closing, I just want to say there's a lot of people out there uh, that are Blizzard employees, and they're there in the crowd. And the reason that all of us are here is you. We're here to celebrate this moment with you. You know, we, look, we really look forward to this weekend. This is a highlight for us all year to come together and to celebrate all the passion of Blizzard Games. And so, to all of you watching, we are grateful. Thank you for being here with us. Liz God, be good to one another. Welcome home. Please welcome game director of World of Warcraft, Ian Hazakostis. Hello, BlizzCon. I am so honored and humbled to be up here with all of you on behalf of World of Warcraft as it turns 15. This is a game that's been at the center of my life for every one of those 15 years. I think 15 years ago on this day, I think I was wandering around looking for stores that were still taking pre-orders of World of Warcraft so that I could jump in there on day one right with everyone else. And just over 11 years ago, I had the privilege of joining the development team to start to try to give back to this game and to this community that have given me so much. And here in this 15th anniversary year, it's been a great year for World of Warcraft. Just taking a look back, we kicked things off with the Battle of Dazar Alor, an alliance and horde going head to head in a raid zone for the very first time. Moved beneath the waves with our Rise of Ashara update. Along the way, we've seen the Kul Tiran join the alliance, and the Zandalari trolls bolster the ranks of the horde. And of course, we have Mechadomes and Volpera waiting in the wings to join them in our upcoming Visions of Nazoth update. And of course, just over two months ago, we launched this little game called World of Warcraft Classic. And as Jay said, it's been incredible watching millions return to Azeroth as it stood before the Cataclysm. Whether you are returning home to an old friend after a long time away, or experiencing it for the very first time, it's been an incredible journey, and here, on the 15th year of World of Warcraft, 
this community stands as strong as it ever has. Speaking of Classic, I'm excited to announce that we have our next update to Classic just around the corner. In about a week and a half, the week of November 12th, we'll be enabling the world bosses, the Zuragos, and Kazakh, but most importantly, the PvP honor system. So if you still have any quests to finish up in Hillsbrad, I would recommend you get those done between now and then. Just a hunch. A couple of weeks ago, we released Dire Mall, and we have Dire Mall playable here on the show floor today. So grab some friends and check it out, or make some new ones. Speaking of the strength of the WoW community, I think one of the greatest sources of pride on our end as the development team is, is being able to work with the community and harness the power of this incredible community in support of some incredible charitable causes. This year, I'm happy to announce that we're working with not one, but two different charities that both work on behalf of children around the world. The first is the Make-A-Wish Foundation, an incredible group that tries to grant wishes to critically ill kids. And honestly, we've had the pleasure of working closely with them over the years. I want to give a shout out to an inspiring young woman named Amara who visited us and who we worked with just a couple months ago. The second organization is we.org, which works to provide food, water, shelter, educational opportunities, and more to children in need around the world. So next month, I'm happy to announce and introduce a pet that's going on sale, the adorable Dottie, the baby alpaca. So, so if you thought that Dolly and Dot were your best friends, wait till you meet Dottie. After worming your way into hearts everywhere in early December, and all proceeds from sales of Dottie from then through the end of the year go to benefit the Make-A-Wish Foundation and we.org. But now, back in Battle for Azeroth, the year is not quite over. We have this 15th anniversary celebration that's just around the corner, and I mean just around the corner. This coming Tuesday, November 5th, we will be enabling all the 15th anniversary events in-game. So first off, that is a throwback battleground, Korax Revenge, inspired by the original Alterac Valley. So dig in, get ready to storm that bridge as you push your way into Stormpike. And next, we have a set of throwback raid experiences, inspired by some of the greatest raid encounters of the early days of WoW, from Kael Thos through the Lich King. Players who complete all three of those experiences will be able to earn their very own Obsidian Worldbreaker mount inspired by Deathwing. And everyone who logs in during the two-month celebration will get their own little little Lefarian pet. Now, for those of you here in attendance at BlizzCon in person, we have a second 15th anniversary celebration in store for you. Please join us tonight at 8.30 outside the Arena Plaza for a toast and a celebration with the World of Warcraft team. A toast to 15 years of Warcraft, of World of Warcraft, 25 years of Warcraft, and to the best that is yet to come. Now, as fun as it's been reflecting on the last 15 years and this past year in World of Warcraft, we all know that the most exciting part of BlizzCon every year is getting to hear and to talk about what's coming next. And so that raises the question, really, where, where would we go from here? What is next in store for Azeroth? I mean, it's, you know, as we stand right now, the Horde and the Alliance are perched on the edge of a tenuous armistice finally putting an end to the battle for Azeroth that has ravaged their world. And yes, the forces of Nizoth and his old god minions are looming, but I've seen some pretty reliable data mine spoilers that suggest that we're going to come out on top in this one. <laughs> Don't tell anyone. And so after, you know, really what's been a rough few years for Azeroth between the assault of the Iron Horde and the Burning Legion and everything that's gone on since, 
I think things might finally be looking up for Azeroth. You know, I mean, you know, it's, all these threats have been taken care of. Just sunny days and clear skies ahead. I mean, personally, I, I can't think of any unaccounted for loose ends or anyone who might be lurking in the shadows, thirsting for revenge. Can you? Ice crown. A monument to our suffering. The veil between life and death. Where a usurper sits on a frozen throne. But no king rules forever. This world is a prison.
So now do the blue eyes make sense? <laughs> so yeah, that just happened. Uh, we were once told by King Terranus that there must always be a Lich King. And now for the first time, there is none. Sylvanas herself warned us that in the end, death claims us all. Well, death is coming for us. And if we want to stand a chance, we are going to have to go where no living soul ever has. We are going to the Shadowlands, the world that is the afterlife for the entire Warcraft universe. Now, along the way, we will get a chance to meet some of the fallen and learn their fates. But this is not a familiar world full of orcs and trolls and dwarves. This is an ancient and mysterious realm that predates the Titans themselves. It is the source of the power of the Scourge that we have seen, true, and it's the power upon which Death Knights draw, but it's also the origin of the noble Valkyr and the spirit healers that guide us back to the land of the living when we pull a couple mobs too many. <laughs> Not that anyone's ever done that. It's where spirits of nature go to begin a cycle of rest and rebirth, and so much more. Let's take a look at this wondrous world that we are set to explore. The Jailer of the Damned. A grim task, which I have failed. Now the Eternal Veil screams torn asunder by her. Within the realm of shadow lies the darkest of terrors, which should never be set free. The Shadowlands are infinite. Their terrors and beauty were never meant for mortal eyes. I wonder if they can bear to behold all that awaits them. So World of Warcraft Shadowlands is coming next year, and it will be available for pre-purchase today. That is just a little glimpse of this incredible world that awaits us. Ahead of us lie many fateful decisions, because at its core, Shadowlands is an expansion that is built around the idea of choice. Agency and self-expression in the rewards you pursue, 
and in the allies with whom you cast your lot. I know you have a ton of questions, like what the heck is a covenant? What is that tower that's sticking out of the sky above Ice Crown? What other changes are coming to World of Warcraft? And so much more. So we have our first panel for you at 2.30 on the Mythic stage, the World of Warcraft What's Next panel, where we'll dig into that and much, much more. Also playable here on the show floor, we invite you to journey into the zone of Bastion and to begin to explore the Shadowlands. Thank you all so much, and it's going to be an incredible weekend ahead. I can't wait to share it with all of you. And now, it's my pleasure to turn things over to Ben Thompson on the Hearthstone team. What's up, BlizzCon? So thrilling to be here with you today. Holy cow level, that Diablo announcement. And World of Warcraft Shadowlands, you gotta be kidding me. I am so excited for what we are showing you here today. I don't know about you, but I cannot wait to play some games. Can you? Look, whether it's demons crawling out of the very bowels of hell, or the skies above us shattering to pieces, it is clear that Blizzard loves telling you a good story. Sometimes we feel, however, that you shouldn't have to leave the safety of the tavern to enjoy a good tale. We believe some of the best stories are told right here at home. Take, for instance, the story that we've been telling you this year, in the Year of the Dragon. For the very first time, we've introduced you to a story that is taking all three sets to tell. It is so big and so awesome. We have been having a lot of fun putting it together. We cannot wait to show you how it all comes to an end. But let's talk a little bit about how it all began. The Rise of Shadows, you were introduced to the formation of a League of Evil. Their plot to steal Dalaran and just how you helped them do it. This was followed by the saviors of Uldum, as you and the League of Explorers answered the call to adventure and crossed the desert sands, seeking to wipe out the plagues that Rafam and his followers had set loose upon the world. Well, that brings us to our third and final chapter, does it not? The curtain rises on a shimmering twilight sky across a blanket of snow. A chill wind gusts across an ancient field of bones. Now the League of Evil and the League of Explorers, well, they've chased each other across all of Azeroth to arrive here in Dragonblight. Dragon is going to finally earn its name with more dragons in a single Hearthstone expansion than ever before. 
Now, you're going to recognize quite a number of these from Azeroth's storied history, but we've stuck a couple in there of our own devising as well for you to enjoy. Descent of Dragons also introduces a handful of new mechanics and one all-powerful new keyword as well. You want to dive in and take a look? Yeah. Let's do it. Now, it wouldn't be right to make a set based around dragons without at least acknowledging the most terrible, the most feared and fearsome dragon ever to walk the world of Azeroth. No, not Deathwing. <laughs> it's the progenitor of all dragon kind, the fearsome Galakrond. Galakrond is Hearthstone's newest hero card. That is to say, he takes the place of your own hero when you put him into play. He also brings with him a powerful new battle cry and his own unique hero power. But here's the key, he becomes stronger, more powerful, when you make use of our newest keyword, invoke. It's important to note here that invoke has its effects on Galakrond, whether he be in your hand or in your deck. And by doing so, you will allow him to achieve his second form. Gets a bit stronger. Now, believe it or not, there are actually those who eagerly await Galakrond's return, those who praise his name across Azeroth. And as a result, the invoke keyword will occasionally show up on some neutral cards as well. Doing so will allow you to achieve the most feared and third final form of Galakrond, that of Galakrond, Azeroth's End. Now, I don't know if this actually signals the end of all of Azeroth. Frankly, from what we've just seen, I'm pretty sure that's Sylvanas' job now. But it sure as heck signals the end of any game of Hearthstone he's in if you can appropriately pull off the Invoke mechanic. All five classes aligned with the League of Evil will have access to the terrible power of Galakrond and be to able to harness it for themselves in the form of a unique hero, bringing a unique battle cry, and a one-of-a-kind hero power as well. Now, Rafam, he takes care of his friends. He is assured that everyone will receive a copy of all five Galakrond legendary hero cards for free just for logging in when the set launches. <laughs> but you may ask, what of the just and noble? What of those pure of heart or more on the side of good? Where are my League of Explorers in this? Well, there are plenty of our winged friends eager to join the fight for good as well. You all know you, Sarah. Let's say hello to the Druid Legendary Dragon, Ysera Unleashed. She's my favorite too. And finally, what would a dragon be without their fearsome breath weapon? If you're a shaman, you're going to have access to lightning breath here. Yeah, we see all our dragon priest friends out there. You look like you're having a good time. We just think it's time to open up the party a little bit. You see, with every set, every class in Hearthstone will receive a legendary dragon, each and their own. We're sure to see their presence being made known in the meta as soon as we release this newest and final chapter to the trilogy on December 10th. But for those of you looking to dive into the action a little sooner, pre-purchase begins today. Now normally that'd be it for Hearthstone. We've given you an amazing new set, an awesome new cinematic, and a song that I know I'm going to be humming for the rest of the weekend. But we're not done. We want to leave you with something a little special before we go. As Hearthstone players ourselves, we all continue to enjoy a variety of ways to play this game we know and love. Whether it be in the arena mode or tavern brawl mode, we enjoy thinking of the cards we build and craft and play and the decks that we put them in in different ways. 
That's why the Hearthstone team is excited to announce today an entirely new way to play this game. Yeah. And it's a new mode that we like to call Hearthstone Battlegrounds. <laughs> Hearthstone Battlegrounds is an eight-player mode that is inspired, all eight, <laughs> eight-player mode that is inspired by the popular auto battler genre with a few Hearthstone twists. In this mode, you and seven other players are challenged to recruit minions and send them into battle against your opponents until only one victor remains. This is the first new mode to come to the game in some time. We have had so much fun making this, and we've had even more fun playing it. So much so, in fact, that we're excited to dedicate the entirety of the Hearthstone demo area here at BlizzCon to Battlegrounds over the next two days. The open beta for this new mode is going to start on November 12th. But for those of you here today, watching at home with the virtual ticket, or pre-purchasing Descent of Dragons, well, you're going to get to enjoy this all starting on Tuesday. We couldn't be more excited to announce even more and talk about more cards and things related to Descent of Dragons and Hearthstone Battlegrounds on the Mythic stage at 3.30. We look forward to seeing you all there. From the very beginning, Hearthstone was always intended to be a warm and welcoming place. It's a place and a home far away from a confusing and often frustrating world outside the tavern. It's a place to set down our swords, join our friends, and gather around the fire. With the return of the Hearthstone Tavern here at BlizzCon, yeah. we hope you do just this. We absolutely invite you to come by and tell us what you think of the new mode. And we love answering questions about the newest set. But mostly, we hope you just drop by, if only to take part in the warmth and the friendship that the tavern has to offer. I know I'll be there, and I look forward to seeing each and every one of you. I don't know about you guys, but I really need to see what Overwatch has to offer, don't you? Let's go take a look, shall we? Thirty years ago, the Omnics declared war. Overwatch was created to rescue humanity from the Omnic Crisis. We became the greatest champions of peace and progress mankind has ever seen. Everybody knows Overwatch got shut down. Half of them are just mercenaries now. The people decided they were better off without us. They even called us criminals. They tore our family apart. Papa told me, after so many years of service, you gave Overwatch everything, and then they pushed you out. Real life is not like the stories our father told us. You were a fool for believing it so. Perhaps I am a fool to think there is still hope for you, brother. Human machine. Before me, I see the future. Humans and omnis standing together. The second Omnic crisis continues. The conflict between Omnics and humans has now claimed over 15,000 lives. But look around. Someone has to do something. We have to do something. Always remember, never accept the world as it appears to be. Dare to see it for what it could be. Winston? It's been too long. What is this? This is broadcasting on the Overwatch emergency frequency. I got a call. They're getting the band back together. They want me, but really, they need you. I have been called. I must answer, always. The enemy is out there. 
and getting stronger. The world is changing once again, and it's time to pick a side. We can make a difference again. The world needs us now, more than ever. Are you with me? Please welcome Game Director of Overwatch, Jeff Kaplan. What are you all doing? You having fun? BlizzCon is so edgy this year. <laughs> I wore black, it's kind of like dad edgy because it's got a giant pink bunny on it. So I, I didn't quite get there. So I feel like you and I, and you know who I'm talking to, I feel like you and I have been together for a very long time. Like we remember when WoW Classic used to be called WoW. It's, it's been, a, we've been around together. I, I have something, don't ever say that. I, I have something that I'm very embarrassed to tell you now, and I'm only telling you because we have this close relationship. I totally forget what I'm supposed to say right now. Like, I don't have a clue. Just drew a blank. Anybody who knows me knows I can just ramble for it forever about anything. But I, like, luckily, I can, from the internet, I can read everything I'm supposed to say <laughs> from the last week. Thank you so much for helping me with that. Oh my gosh. That, that was so sweet. The team really appreciate it. Actually, if you want to know how game developers feel about leaks, the WoW team made a cinematic called Shadowlands. And picture my face where Sylvanas's was. And then instead of that helmet, it was my cell phone. And that's, yeah. I should probably talk about Overwatch now. <laughs> I'm just digging a hole, you know? Um, so a very dear friend of mine five years ago, on, on this stage, almost to this very day, a gentleman by the name of Chris Metzen. And, and let him hear it. He's watching with us right now. Chris came out five years ago on this stage, and he said it's time for a new adventure, and he wanted to take us all with him. And he came out and he announced Overwatch, and it was one of the most special moments of my life. And the women and men who work on Overwatch have been working so hard to make something very special, and today they'd like to dedicate that to you. So please enjoy. What's on your mind, May? Do... do we have enough people for this mission? As long as we stick together, we'll be fine. If you're going to show, now would be a good time. Attention! This is your captain speaking. We are on final approach to Paris. That's our cue. 
you may now power on your electronic devices. Weather is mostly cloudy, with a 100% chance of... Null Sector Invasion. Winston, clear as a spot to land. We'll be right behind you. <laughs> you better be. Why is Null Sector attacking now? I don't know, May. But the people down there need help. And right now, we are all they've got. Bonjour, officer. We're here to help. Euh, c'était un singe? Stay here. Tracer, get everyone out of here. I'll hold the line. But you said to stick together. Don't worry. I'll be right behind you. You'd better be.
is ours, my friends! Hi, Lena. Brigitte? Oh my gosh, you've grown! <laughs> oh, everyone, this is May. Hi, everyone. Nice to meet you. Oh. <laughs> Reinhardt. Good to have you on board. Thank you. Monsieur, does this mean Overwatch is back? Yes. Yes, we are. <laughs> Did you like it? Did you enjoy? Awesome. On behalf of the Overwatch team, I am extremely proud and excited to finally and officially announce Overwatch 2. Now, I know you have a lot of questions, but we always feel like our games speak for themselves, so let's take a look at the gameplay and then we'll talk. What are you doing here? It's happening again. Paris was just the beginning. This is a global invasion. So, how's Overwatch enjoyed our city? It's beautiful, except for all the killer robots. Look up there, that's the command ship. Then we know what we have to do. Oh, yeah! You're with me. We're getting aboard that ship. I knew he would return one day. It has been too long, Master. I can't do this. You've made your choice. Nobody will stop us. Trouble is cropping up all over the world. It's not just no sector. A lot of lives are riding on what we do next. We'll have to fight. One city at a time. Let's then, Brigitte. I've got you, Papa. Watching your back. Now that's teamwork. Time to learn some new tricks. Sojourn here. Oh, we are gonna have so much fun. It is gonna be so awesome. So, we have a lot to talk about, right? First and foremost, you have to remember that Overwatch is a team versus team, 6v6 competitive experience. And there is no way we're losing that at all. In fact, that's a huge focus. So Overwatch 2 will have a brand new core competitive game mode called Push. Now, what I mean when I say core is that you will play this in quick play, it will be played in competitive, and it will also be played by the Overwatch League. So we're really excited to finally add a new core game mode. Now we want everybody here today to have a chance to play it and tell us how awesome and balanced it is. 
So you can play on a brand new map, which takes place in Toronto, our first Canadian map. It's over in Hall A, so we inv invite you to come play the demo. We think you'll be awesome. Now, when I talk to lots of you, there's a common request that you want out of Overwatch, and Overwatch 2 is gonna deliver on this, and that's for more story and for PVE, for cooperative experiences. Overwatch 2 will feature a ton of PVE content. We will have a complete story experience featuring story missions, the first of which, which is called Rio de Janeiro, is also playable in Hall A for all of you today. <laughs> Cannot wait to hear what you think about it. In addition, as you saw, we have something called Hero Missions, which Hero Missions are focused on highly replayable cooperative experience. The, the analogy we like to use on the team is similar to what Adventure Mode is to Diablo versus its campaign. That's what Hero Missions are intended to be. And they're powered by this really cool progression system where you can level up your heroes, get more powerful, customize your abilities, do different talents. It's gonna be a ton of fun. Now, you might have also noticed the heroes all have a new look to them. Every one of the 31 heroes, plus more, are getting an upgraded look to them. And there's a really awesome panel that's gonna happen tomorrow on Saturday in here that is gonna go through all of the engine upgrades that are coming to Overwatch 2 and all of the new looks and explanation of the new art style that I'm really excited about. Now, Overwatch and Overwatch 2 at their core are all about heroes and we know that we cannot make a brand new Overwatch game without having new heroes. So Overwatch 2, in addition to featuring Sojourn, who we are not talking about today besides just confirming that she is here, Overwatch 2 will feature multiple new heroes that will come with the game. And we're very excited about that. Now, a lot of you have questions like, why a sequel? Or what does that mean to me as a player of the original game? I put so much time into this game, I cared about it so much. Well, we thought about it, and for us as gamers, you know, sequels make us nervous more than anything else. So what we're hoping to do with Overwatch 2 is really redefine what a sequel means. And I think some explanation is in order right now. So for all original players of Overwatch, players of the current Overwatch game, you will get to play on all of the same maps as Overwatch 2 players, including all of the brand new maps that are coming to Overwatch 2. And you will get to play with all of the same heroes as Overwatch 2 players. It will be a shared multiplayer environment where no one gets left behind. The other thing that I think a lot of us are thinking about is all of those cool accomplishments and cosmetics that we've been unlocking over the years. You know, how hard did you work for your Witch Mercy skin, for example? We wanna make sure that all Overwatch cosmetics come forward with you into Overwatch 2, so all of your progress matters. Nothing's getting left behind. No one's getting left behind. We worked so hard to build this community of over 50 million players at this point. The last thing we would ever do is do anything to split uh, what an amazing community you guys are and, and how much you mean to us. So Overwatch 2 is going to be amazing. We have a panel right here on this stage at 1.30 where we're gonna go into a lot more detail. Now, it's time for BlizzCon. I'm staring you know, straight down the aisle at those beautiful machines with Diablo 4 loaded on them. We've got World of Warcraft Shadowlands. We've got Hearthstone Battlegrounds. We've got two different Overwatch 2 demos. I just want you all to remember how much we all mean to each other, be good to each other, enjoy each other this weekend. Now let's go play some video games. Have fun, everybody.
This concludes our opening ceremonies. Mythic Stages panel presentations resume shortly with Diablo 4 Unveiled. Have a great BlizzCon.